Marvelous Marvin Hagler comes into this match two fights removed from his controversial draw against Vito Anofermo for the middleweight title. If he wins this fight, he is promised a shot against the winner of the upcoming Alan Minter and to a Fermo rematch for the championship. In the opposite corner is the pesky Marcos Geraldo, who at 25 years old has a record of 53 wins against 15 losses. Uh, he's the Mexican middleweight champion and the sparring partner for the then WBA welterweight champion Pepino Cuevas. Uh, he's known to American audiences for giving Sugar Ray Leonard a good battle for 10 rounds a year earlier. Now, Geraldo is coming off a 10th round knockout of John LeCicero and is now the 5th ranked contender in the middleweight division, uh, but he's one of the most inconsistent fighters of the time period and isn't really held in high regard because he has a tendency to go down hard and early against lesser opposition. But when he wants to put in the work, uh, he's a hard day at the office for anyone, in particular against Hagler here, as it gives the future middleweight king an unexpectedly hard fight. Well, we are ready for this middleweight action. Both Hagler and Geraldo weighed in at 160 pounds. You're looking at Marcos Geraldo, a record of 43 and 13 with 24 knockouts, according to Ring Magazine. Marvin Hagler is 48, 2 and 2. He avenged both of those defeats. Geraldo, 13 losses, yes. Many of them came early in his career, and as Gil Clancy pointed out, he is on a streak. Ten consecutive victories. They are both 27 years of age. Hagler living in Brockton, Massachusetts. Marco Serraldo in Mexico City. Here in Nevada, judging is by three judges at ringside. They are Art Lurie, Dwayne Ford, and Charles Minker. The referee is Carlos Padilla who lives here in Las Vegas. The scoring is on the 10-point must system, nine points or less to the loser of a round. There can be a 10-10 draw. The mandatory eight count, three knockdown rule in Nevada, and the count continues after the bell if a fighter is down, except in the final round. This is an 18-foot ring at the Sports Pavilion, and we're ready to go with first round action. Hagler in the red trunk circling to the left. Geraldo in the white trunks now at the bottom of your screen. Hagler coming off two quick knockout victories over Lucy Famani and Bobby Boogaloo Watts since his controversial draw to Vito Antifermo in this very same ring last November. Gil Clancy, uh, we watched uh, Geraldo on that same card of the Hagler Hominy fight in Portland, Maine, and he sends Geraldo down to the canvas. No, no knockdown, Tim, no, no knockdown. knockdown. Got about a half a punch in as Geraldo pulled back and lost his balance. Started to say Geraldo with a 10 round TKO over Johnny Le Cicero at Portland, Maine, and he showed an awful lot of skills and a lot of experience in that fight. Yes, he did. A very, very relaxed fighter. Made the other fella miss and hit him with everything but the kitchen sink. Good counter puncher. Good on his feet. Hagler counter punching. Got a straight right hand. Now he throws that right hand jab. Oh, a good sharp left hook from Hagler. Good counter from Geraldo. Now Hagler's trying to move over and get the fellow in front of him. He's trying to make Geraldo move his in his direction. Hand landed, but Geraldo was backing away, went to the ropes. Geraldo does that quite often with punches. He takes the sting out of him because he just seems to move back with the punch. It takes that, it cushions the punch. There's some of that movement and a little of the bravado from Marcos Geraldo. And he's flurrying. Hagler's fight, toe to toe. Less than a minute to go, round two. As usual, a good Mexican contingent on hand here in Las Vegas. And of course, uh, they're supporting Marcos Geraldo, the Mexican champion in Massachusetts. Thinks of himself as the uncrowned champion, perhaps with some justification. A right hook landed. Tim, he cushioned the punch a little bit. He rolled with it. Wasn't as good a punch as it seemed to be. Less than 30 seconds to go in round two. Hagler going to the body, and there's some of that macho from Geraldo. Well, the, ma the macho was he thought that Hagler hit him low with both those punches. They were both borderline punches. 
That was a silent protest, Tim. Final seconds of round number two. Two of the top middleweights in the world, live on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Oh. Heavyweight action on Sunday, May 25th. Jerry Cooney, his first big network appearance against the veteran Jimmy Young. Should be a great fight. You'll see it here on the Sports Spectacular. Sunday, Hag May 25th. Hagler landed a fl flagrantly low blow, but the referee was behind and didn't see it. He just snapped Toralo's head back with that right jab. One thing about being a puncher, the, the way Hagler is, one big punch can turn this fight or, or make it go all his way. Let's put it that way. He is the puncher of the two. Here in the end of round number three, Hagler unable to put any kind of consistent offense on the tricky Marco Seraldo. Seraldo through the first three rounds. We've got the fight dead even at this point. I don't think anybody would really argue that. Neither fighter has been able to dominate. Fourth round action. The winner with a title shot against the winner of the Minter and a Fermo Middleweight Championship fight coming up in June next month. You, know, you mentioned earlier that Geraldo has a regal look in the ring. One thing, he doesn't seem to have any respect for Hagler at all. He has confidence in himself, Tim. Sure does. That was evident in the pre-fight interviews with him. It's his style in the ring, and he's shown it since the fight began. Indeed, I think he's gathered even a little more as the fight has gone on. Hagler's been landing some low blows, Tim. He just landed another low blow, and they're really low. I'm surprised that the referee hasn't warned them as yet. Hagler popping that jab, backing Geraldo up. Domination from Marco Geraldo, less than a minute to go, round number four. Low blow by Geraldo, and he was won. Geraldo has had 56 fights. Hagler has had 52. They are veterans each. Tim, unless Hagler lands a big, big punch in this fight, he's going to have his hands full right into that final bell. This is going to be a close, tough fight. Has to land the big one. None of those punches landed. And again, he missed. Coming to the end of round number four is Aralo present presenting uh, some great problems for Hagler. Marco Seraldo, happy to get this opportunity here against the number one ranked fighter, and he's putting some pressure on. Hagler covered up well, however. Hagler is by far the better puncher. Geraldo, Geraldo is a busy fighter, but he's an arm puncher. He slaps. 24 knockouts and 43 victories for Geraldo. But not of the explosive, decisive variety now. Finally, Hagler landed a punch that Straightened up Geraldo and has got him going backwards, but now he plants and flurries back. Right hand landed there and a pretty good sample. He had a pretty good lick at Hagler, but didn't appear to phase him at all. No, I'm not impressed with Geraldo's punching power at all, Tim. You, you mentioned he had 24 knockouts, but it's who you knock out that counts. That's exactly right. We'd like to alert our stations along the line. We'll be going to a station break. The end of this fifth round. I have Nice straight right hand by Geraldo. Hey, Hagler blink. Well, that's two warnings this round for low blows. See if he takes a point away at the end of the round. Under a minute to go, round five. Jerry Cooney, Jimmy Young. A week from tomorrow here on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Something coming 
Heavyweight, everybody's talking about I Gary am. Cooney. Jimmy Young, they say, has been training hard and the best shape that he's been in a long time. It's an opportunity to put himself back into the heavyweight limelight. Left hand from Hagler back. Geraldo into the Hagler corner. First infighting flurry. We've seen them stand there toe-to-toe -to -toe so far in the fight. Hagler able to duck under most of Geraldo's blows. Now he comes up from underneath and landed an uppercut. We'll continue live from Las Vegas after this word from your local station. It reminds me of like if a dog chases a cat into a corner, all of a sudden the cat has to fight and he says, why not he can fight like heck? There it is now from Geraldo. He fights in flurries. He did that against La Cicero. Last fight we watched. Him in action. Hagler was talking to him, said, said it didn't hurt, but what it does is score points. Hagler banging to the body. Tim, before this fight, we mentioned that Lupe Sanchez, who handles Geraldo, also handles Pepino Cuevas, the champion. And I know that he doesn't put a fighter in the ring unless he thinks he has a chance to win. And this kid certainly does have a chance to win today. Now Hagler's back fighting regular style. He's no longer a southpaw. And Geraldo switched for a second. This is a battle. It's really a strategic battle right now. And I think Geraldo is outthinking him, and Hagler, of course, has got the big punch. Now he's clever again. Two clever, experienced fighters in a chess match thus far. Less than 30 seconds to go round six. Must be frustrating for Hagler not to be able to get that vaunted power and put it together on Geraldo. He's found him very difficult to hit. We're in the final seconds of the sixth round. Neither fighter has been in any trouble so far. To maneuver Hagler right now anywhere he wants him, Tim. That's why he's been so effective. He's going, Hagler's going to have to either catch him coming in or he's going to have to hit him with that big right hook, hook leaping in because he's... Geraldo right now is doing a tattoo job on him. Good round for Marcos Geraldo. Hagler still coming forward, but just unable to get two or three punches in a row that do any damage. And he's trying everything. He's just switched around again. Looks like a confused fighter, Tim. Geraldo didn't fall for that trap. Hagler went against the ropes. Zip say, okay, let's, let's fight. Let's throw some punches. All Geraldo did was walk away. Hagler with a couple of consecutive jabs. Snapping Geraldo's head back. Less than a minute to go, round seven. Another good jab. But he pays for it. Geraldo counter-punching well again. Right hand once again, and it looked like they bumped heads on that exchange. Well cuts, okay? Watch your head. Hack was the guy with the bald head. You know, they can really bust you up with those bald heads, and he's the guy that rubbed his head. <laughs> Under 30 seconds to go round seven. Good combination by Geraldo. Beautiful, underneath and over, Tim. Watching Geraldo, you begin to think if he had power, he'd be awesome. Right, he's just an arm puncher, Tim, but he's landing. Final seconds of the seventh round. Marvin Hagler rated number one, Araldo number five, and Hagler finishing strongly. <laughs> Hagler perhaps looking ahead for the second title shot. Got his hands full here today against Geraldo. Tim, in Geraldo's corner, he looked a little tired. When you get tired, that's when you're going to have to stand and fight. He's doing this may that turn now. into a brawl now. All the tactics may go out the window, and now it's going to be who outfights who, and the fight's on the line. So let's see who can outfight who. Hagler is really determined in this round, putting continual pressure now on Geraldo. Geraldo continues to counterpunch effectively. 
There's always a moment of truth in a fight, Tim. It's just about now it's going to take place. Eighth round scheduled for 10. Yeah, Raldo's a little tired. Hagler a little busier than Veraldo this round. Good left to the cheekbone of Veraldo. There's that moment of swoop we were talking about, Tim. Have to settle down and fight. Not much sting in Aralo's punches in this eighth round. He does appear arm weary. Perhaps the best punch of the fight for Hagler, that left. A minute to go in round eight. Hagler going to the body, coming up top, throwing a lot of leather in this eighth round. Under 30 seconds to go. Jabbing well now, Marvin Hagler. Been a good round for him. We're in the final seconds of the eighth. We still have it very close on our card, but Hagler just seems to have taken a lot out of Geraldo in that eighth round. So this is certainly the key round for the Mexican champion, and Hagler continues to press. Yeah, he's getting, he's getting three shots now because even when he misses, Geraldo doesn't count. He's tired. It's got to be the other way around for Geraldo to win. He's going to have to start taking chances. Hagler jabbing effectively. He has the last couple of rounds. A little loss of confidence in the eyes of Geraldo, it would appear to me. Hagler, Geraldo pulled away from most of the impact, and now Geraldo Furrier. He's got to know he's got to get busy here. Less than a minute to go in the ninth round. Right uppercut landed to the jaw. Hagler scores with a combination. And Geraldo waves him in saying it didn't hurt me, but he's landing now and continually. Under 30 to go in round nine. And that right jab has been a big punch for Hagler. Approaching the end of the ninth round, Marvin Hagler assuming command in this fight. They told him to get off first. Get off first. All Let's right. See well, if he does it. Your understanding of Spanish is uh, superior to mine, Gil. That's not saying a lot, Mike. Well, he's trying. He's trying. He's trying. He will try. Oh, he was wobbled by Hagler, but got his balance back. It looks like we'll have a slugfest here in this final round. Well, he came out trying, but then he got nailed. There's a foul. He grabbed the rope and used it for leverage. He got a warning from Carlos Padilla, the referee. Hagler's going to keep coming at him. Hagler can't be absolutely certain that he's got this fight on points, so he can't afford to just uh, laze around out there, and it looks like he's going to continue to throw punches. He's taking big shots at Geraldo now, though. Geraldo has to punch himself, and he has to keep punching. They're toe-to-toe -to -toe in the middle of the ring now in this final round. Right hand snapped Geraldo's head back. 
Kind of an uphill jab from Hagler That's against right. his taller opponent. As we pointed out before, his jab is much more powerful than Geraldo's right hand. Hagler is tired, as we pointed he, out, though, Tim. He's tired. He was not sent into the ropes with a punch. Some of the crowd here thought he was. He was off balance and weary. Just kind of fell back into the ropes. He's had to work hard against Marco Geraldo. Well, if he gets this decision, it's a great, good tighten him up for him for his championship fight, Tim. The other two fights were too easy. Boy, you're Some not kidding. This has been a great workout. He does not plan another fight before meeting the winner of Minerana Fermo, and that's assuming he gets a decision here. Ronaldo's teeing off now. He's trying, planting himself, trying to throw punches. Hasn't time got anything fight. on it, though. And Hagler scoring inside. Less than 30 seconds to go in the fight. Ronaldo is weary. He's weary. He's tired, but he's never really been hurt by Marvin Hagler, the bomb thrower from Brockton. He's not been able to really put any punishment on Geraldo. He's put the wearying kind of punishment on, but nothing really spectacular. Final seconds of the fight. A lot of people are yelling, Geraldo, Geraldo. Well, he's got a lot of Mexican fans, and he put on a great show here. That's the end of the fight. And Marvin Hagler has had his hands full. The crowd comes to the Standing here, ovation, the Tim. Standing the ovation. Great middleweight fight. We'll be back in a moment. And it's a decision. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Twain Ford scores 97-93. Judge Chuck Minker scores 97-95. And Judge Art Lurie scores 97-94. In favor of the winner by unanimous decision, marvelous Marvin Hagler. Well, there it is, Marvin Hagler winning a decision unanimously here Marco, Marco, against uh, the Mexican Marco, champion, Marco Geraldo, who uh, certainly gave uh, more than a good accounting of himself against uh, against the number one rated Marvin Hagler. And uh, Marvin got himself more than he can bargain for here this afternoon as he was really in against a tester and he's joining us here at ringside. We can get the hand mic, here we do, here we have it. And uh, all we gotta do is get turned around here, Marvin. We've got the camera right behind you. And uh, Marvin, I, I gotta believe that uh, you didn't expect as tough a fight as you got from Marco Geraldo. Uh, was, no, I really, I only had about a good nine days in the gym, you know, and uh, because I had a death in the family, with everybody up there, but the next time that I fight him, I'll be in Ladies better shape, because I should have put this man away. But I felt good, I'm glad that I fought a good 10 round fight, hard for the championship, because you need those kind of fights to get you ready for the championship. First of all, I'd like to thank God for the strength and the courage. Also to say hi to my fiance, we'll be married in June, and my mother that couldn't make it, follows me all over the world. All right, and my son in New Jersey, thank Gil, you. Gil made that point that uh, you, got your, you got yourself a good workout oh, uh, it, with the Geraldo. Loved it. He's a good fighter. He see that I was very skilled too. Every time he would come with something, I would come right back. I showed him that I was made of a good championship. Those are the kind of fights that really proves what a championship is all about. Coming back in the last four rounds the way that I did. I felt real nice and strong, a little tired, but the next time that we fight, if we ever fight, I'll be in better condition. You want Vito rather than Minder, don't you? Doesn't make any, any difference. I'd like to bring Vito right back here to Vegas where we had that draw and finish him off right here. But Alan Menta, he's a champion, so that's the guy I got to go after. I want my belt that belongs to me. I've been training hard, running these long rows and everything. It's got to come to me. Sooner or later, it's got to come to okay, me. Okay, Marvin, congratulations on Thanks your victory here today. And Now, Geraldo doesn't build on his performance here as he's knocked out in the first round by Caveman Lee in his next bout. A little over a year later, Thomas Hearns ices him in one round as well. Uh, after the Hearns fight, Geraldo is pretty much relegated to journeyman status, uh, losing seven of his last eight fights. Uh, meanwhile, Hagler does get his shot immediately after this victory, taking out Alan Minter for the middleweight title. Uh, if you haven't checked out the documentary piece on Hagler, I'll leave the link in the description box below. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.